Welcome to Heart of the Matter. My name is Dipwa Ayo Adeosi. Today, I'm super excited to be talking to Miss Olive Emodi. She's a media personality and a very, very big social media influencer. And she's going to be talking to us about just living life as a Christian, as a child of God, in the middle of the creative industry, media industry, entertainment industry, its challenges, its blessings, and everything that comes with it. I cannot wait to share this with you. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <music> Welcome back to Heart of the Matter. We are here with our amazing guest, yes. the beautiful <laughs> Olive Emodi. Thank you so much. It's a delight to be here. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? How does it feel to be on this side? <laughs> <clears throat> so usually I'm used to asking the questions, but yeah. it's a little different for me. Today. Every time I have to be on the other side, I'm like, uh, be careful, don't go and say something. I'm no, not sure. Because <laughs> it's easier to ask the questions than People to answer. People think that it's actually, but anyway, Sha, it's, we know, we know. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, Olive, I can like to call you, as far as the media and entertainment creative industry goes, I can call you woman of all trades because you do quite a lot. However, yes, I do. <laughs> it, it can be misconstrued, you know, there are specific things that you do. So, what do you actually do? Okay, so originally I'm trained to be a lawyer, and I would always say this because once a lawyer, always a lawyer. I was called okay. to bar, but I'm not practicing law. I'm okay. expressing my law in different ways by hosting legal events and being a part of the NBA conference one way or the other. Nice. However, primarily I'm a TV presenter, I'm a TV producer, I'm an actor, I'm an MC. Ah, I like that one because of money. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm a writer. It's okay. <laughs> so, writing, what do you do? What, what kind of content do so, you write? So, the, oh, the unfortunate thing is that I don't think I've been taking my writing as seriously. Some of my friends are complaining about how I like to write Instagram episodes, but I have a lot of write-ups in my documents, it. you know, my, mm -hmm. my word documents. Mm -hmm. I, I write about life. I write about inspiration because I find that several of the experiences that I've been through, there's always something that can be learned from there. Mm -hmm. And because I recently started a storytelling page, which I'm running anonymously for now, I know people are going to start guessing and trying to think which one, but yeah, you, know, you just don't know. Cast it. No, they don't know yet which one. <laughs> so I like I, I meet people and I think in content. So yes, I mm -hmm. use that as an avenue to um, give out my opportunity so to you tell have stories. A secret page. I just started it not too long ago. So before you go and start thinking, oh, we should have. I'm not to start blog every like that. page. I'm not <laughs> every... <laughs> so where is Olive in this? No, no, okay. no, no, not yet. All right, cool, 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 cool. So, so many different things that you do. But what has that trajectory been like? Because I know there's other people who start off being presenters and end up being actors. But some people are presenters who dabble into acting for a very short time, but they're back to their presenting. It's not really their thing. But what is it? What is that career trajectory for you? What's that career journey been like? Okay, so mine started in university. Or do I say before university? When I always thought I want to be a lawyer, mm. and then I, I wanted to be an actor, and I wanted to be a broadcaster. But I didn't know how I was going to intermarry all of this. You know, so my mom, I remember when I was filling my jam form, I didn't know what to feel. I was so confused. And my mom said, you already have the natural giftings of a broadcaster, of, a, of an actor. Why not go and study law? Because that one, you can't rehearse to be a lawyer. So True. go study law, get the degree, and come out. And if you decide you don't want to practice law, at least you already have that. So that was eventually how, what played out. I studied law. I got called to BAP. Whilst in my final year, I participated in an acting reality show. So it was... It was intense. We had okay. the likes of Nobet Young. Um, RMD was the executive producer. It was a project by Delta State Government. It was called Delta Talent Quest. And okay. I just went there. You know those, go for audition, go for audition. I didn't really go there with the mind mm -hmm. that I was going to get picked. But out of thousands, I got into the house and I won the reality show. At the wow. time, it was it was nice money and a brand new car. It was in 2011. Okay, So I Check thought, you man, out. this is me. This acting, only would have seen me. I'm not doing anything else. I didn't want to go to law school at that time. So I ended up staying at home for one year. Unfortunately, I didn't go to law school that one year. Mm. And I didn't even do Nollywood. I ended up spending one year pastoring it since church. Wow, really? <laughs> so Well, I did so much. <laughs> so it's a very long story. But in summary, it started off with me studying law. Then from law, I finished, got called. Um, and at the end of the day, I started out with TV. Okay. From TV, being a TV presenter, I said I became a segment producer. I started producing segments on my show. Okay. Then from there, I got onto radio. Okay. I did radio for a while, but at some point it became too much. I was in a mm. lot, okay. so I had to calm down on the radio beat and then face my hosting, which I enjoy absolutely. I love wow. the energy I get from the audience. So I, I'm a professional MC. And um, on other days when I'm just in my room, mm. I express myself via writing. 
So, okay. So it was one thing, and you can see like a seamless, kind of an easy organic progression. No, it was not an easy organic progression. It really? was a very difficult one. There were challenges that I encountered along the way. A lot Okay, of let's talk about some of those challenges. Okay, the first one would be that my first few months of work, I got demoted. You got wait, you got demoted. Yes. Do you know that's something I never hear? I hear about people getting fired, people going on probation, but to get like this, oh yeah, go. Oh yes, I became a floor manager for about wow. eight months. Now this is not to look down the work of a floor manager, but mm -hmm. in my organization, a floor manager is the one who does the work of, and it, the role of the floor manager is usually left for the interns. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity, the option of either staying back or resigning. So yes, it was a, it was a tough decision because I felt oh. a little humiliated at that point. But I would never forget my mother. Every time I have to talk about this, my mom said, you will stay there, you will rise from the bottom to the top, top. you would wow. learn and you rise through the ranks. That there's something that God wants you to learn. That's why he sent you to the bottom there. So start mm. from where you are. And it was difficult, but today it gives me content. So when you're inviting me to speak at events, I have content, I have stories <laughs> and experiences. So if I could do it all over again, I don't think I'll change a thing. Wow, wow. Yeah. I've never, that's actually quite deep, to be demoted, but also to rise from that is actually yes. quite beautiful. Speaking of rising and, and sort of courage and, and on that sort of trajectory, I know very, very unashamed uh, Jesus girl that you are. We all know that that's, that's <laughs> what you carry, okay? So what is that faith journey been? You know, when you come to know God, like what is that journey by, on it, you know, by itself on its own? Well, it's a journey that has been turning on you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's if I look at my faith journey, it's 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 long, mm. it's beautiful, it's been full of experiences. I haven't always been rooted and grounded in my faith. Mm -hmm. Now, I was born into a Christian home. I grew up seeing my mother beating me at night because I refused to pray wow. or because I'm sleeping off. She would tell me to kneel down in the center of the house well, so everyone, you know, while the devotion is going on just so I could stay awake. So I always knew that my mom was a God-conscious person. At some mm -hmm. point, she became a pastor. And, you know, I loved God as a child. But I found that I needed to find God for myself, by myself. So I remember when I was in history and philosophy, a uh, lecturer would ask, have you ever questioned your faith? And mm. my answer was yes, because it was the time I had to sit down and ask myself, is there really God? Or is it something people are telling us to hang on to? Was there, was there, was there an event that caused that crisis of belief, or was it just out of trying to figure out faith no, just, for yourself? Uh, just trying to figure out faith for myself, because okay. I'm a very inquisitive person. I ask questions, and I'm very adventurous. Okay. So I won't say that I, I was always, I've always been a Jesus girl. The path to being a Jesus girl hasn't always been smooth for me. There have been times when I would fall off the faith, and we know the devil, how he's very quick to, he knows your weaknesses and he tries to lure them. So he tries to lure you out of your faith with them. And one of the things that I had to learn over time to deal with or to accept was the concept of grace. And times when I did things that I felt I wasn't proud of or God wasn't proud of me, that God still loved me and that I was the object of his love. I needed to learn that over time. And not because I always had the, I think I have one of the most wicked consciences, if that makes any sense. Wow. So when I do anything I'm not proud of, or anything that makes me sad, I would beat myself mm. so bad. I would say, oh, I, I hold myself to high expectations. And every once in a while I slip. And when I do, I feel so terrible. But mm. over time, I think I've learned that the focus should not be on trying not to make mistakes, but trying to build a closer relationship with God, mm. not because I want anything from him, but just because I love him. And in doing all of this, the closer I get to him, the easier my journey mm. will get and the easier you know, it will be to please him because it's him that gives me the power to please him. Mm. So yeah, it's been a journey of learning, unlearning, relearning, and I'm, I'm grateful for it, really. I'm grateful for even the stupid mistakes I've made. I'm mm. grateful. And we're grateful that you're unashamed about it. But... Talking about your faith now, applying it to all these many things that you now do in your professional career, how do they kind of marry, if they do? Oh, they do, absolutely. I always say that, now, God, I'm not trying to even speak Christianese, but even if I am, hey, it's not really wrong. I, I find that every time I've gotten an award, I've gotten a number of awards, every mm. time I go to receive it, I always say mm. that I dedicate this award to God mm. because at the end of the day, he's the reason I do everything that I do. Mm -hmm. I feel that God has placed me on this path 
to enable me be a voice for others. Mm -hmm. Now, evangelism happens in different forms. Some people go on the road and ring the bell and tell you, give your life to Christ. If you don't, judgment is coming and you go to hell. Mm -hmm. That is some people's form of evangelism. That is not mine. My form of evangelism is to be a light. Mm -hmm. I want to be a light such that people will see me and come to me and say, Olive, how are you doing this? And then I'll say, oh, I, there's a God that helps me do what mm -hmm. I do. There's a God that help me get, helps me get to, to this extent and to these levels. Mm -hmm. Because I would never, ever say that my achievement was because I was so good. I'm not the most intelligent or the most mm -hmm. brilliant young girl or TV presenter ever. But I feel that God is that distinguishing factor that I have. He helps me to stand out. Mm -hmm. And it's in, you know, it's in intentionally building a relationship with him. And just him mentioning my names in places that I would probably not have had my name yeah. mentioned by myself. So yes, my faith has helped a lot, even in the little things. Sometimes I'm about to do something, I have absolutely no idea how to go. People don't understand it, how interested the Holy Spirit is in the most minute details of our lives. Things like, I'm not in the mood to go on air, I'm really in a foul mood, I don't want to work. Mm -hmm. But then I have a short conversation with the Holy Spirit and say, you know, this is what is paying my bills. I have to, you know, I have to warm up. So please just help me take control of my mood. And all of a sudden, they say, three, two, one, you're alive. And it's almost as if I wasn't sad the minute before. Mm -hmm. So yes, he helps me. It, my, my faith is definitely the basic foundation of everything that I have gotten in my career today. Wow. And I, I touched on something. You talked about being light, you know, and wanting to be light. So, and we know that the media industry, you know, even psh, working, to, you know, both working in the media industry, we know what it's like, the kind of pressures from like, oh, you're dressing like this, to men, you know, calling, to having to compromise standards, to get to certain heights and get certain levels and, and whatnot, or get certain kinds of jobs and whatnot. So, do you consider yourself a role model in that regard? Well, um, I would say that I'm also, I thank God for how far I've come, but I'm still learning stuff. Mm. I'm not going to say that I'm the grand normal, I'm the determining factor of what it feels like to be in the entertainment industry. I feel that I've made a bit of impact. I've made some impact. I look forward to making more impact. I would say that when I started, or a lot of the time, mm. initially I didn't want to be so open and so brazen about my love for Jesus because I was afraid. Mm. I was afraid that what happens when I do something that, Maybe I slip up, I do something, and then the blogs hear about it. I do something that God is not proud of. Would I still be able to count myself as a mentor, as a role model? But over time, I remember the time I was dealing so much with that fear, and God said to me that, <clears throat> excuse me, God said to me that my fears, uh, um, his perfect love covers all my fears. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn that, you know what, Olive, just go all out. Talk about your love for Jesus. And God forbid, if you do anything stupid, and so what? Mm -hmm. So I feel that that's what, is, that's what holds down a lot of people from expressing mm -hmm. their love and their faith about Christ. A lot that's of people true. in our industry. Well, let's, let's, let's cap it there for, for a second. I want us to go on a break. But when we come back, I want us to delve a little deeper into some of these pressures so that we can give a more realistic and practical view for people who might be struggling with this as well. Perfect. All right. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Oasis Colloquium is bringing women together, mothers, daughters, wives. We are teaching, challenging, and speaking life into one another. Letting the light of God's word replenishing our souls. Themed, uncensored, and unreserved. Join us Saturday, 13th of July, 4 p.m., right here at Guiding Light Assembly, Parkview Estate, Eco, Lagos. Welcome back to Heart of the Matter. We're still discussing with Olive Emodi, who's talking to us about, you know, dealing with being a Christian and being fine and all of that in, you know, this amazing media, entertainment, creative career I know, right? and, and <laughs> industry we work in. Okay, so the other question I had, we're talking about, you know, pressures and, and what that looks like, but I realize that there can be pressure on two sides. There can be pressure from the industry, but there can also be pressure from the church and the Christian community. You oh, know, yes. For people who work in media, there's a lot of scrutiny. Um, but let's, let's do one after the other. So what are specific pressures that you have faced um, from career? From I would industry? like to add a third pressure to that. So okay. there's pressure from, you know, from the industry, you say. One. Pressure from the Christian fold. Yes, too. And it's internal pressure, pressure that, that we put on ourselves. That's true. And that's I think true. that's a very important pressure I'd like to talk about before Definitely. I go into pressures of... So, yeah, pressures that we put on ourselves. Pressures to... We have 
standards. Some standards realistic, some unrealistic. There's an expectation of, oh, if only I can get to this level, I'll be so happy. Oh, if only I can do this, I'll be so happy. If only I can achieve this in my career, I'll be so happy. And if it doesn't work out well, you start to question yourself and ask yourself, am I good enough? So I'm not going to come here and act like I've always known that I was the next best thing after fried rice, even though I know that I'm a better thing than fried rice. Yeah, but there mm, Mm, it's jollof. We'll right, come back right. to this argument. <laughs> However, I know that there have been times when I've doubted my own capacity, my mm -hmm. own capability, which is why it's now important to have a circle that would stand as a reminder. Mm. So I have friends, I have a friend, I said that, you know, I have friends that are mirrors to me. There are mm. days when I'm down and I'm tired and I can't see the olive that I am. Mm. And there's always someone in my circle, a mm -hmm. Christian sister, you know, that would remind me that, olive, this is not who you are. Mm. This, person, this experience right now does not define you. This is who you are. So it's someone that sees who you are meant to be and calls that person into existence. So yes, I faced internal pressures, pressures to please people. People bondage is something that in the industry you would have to learn people to deal with. Bondage. You know, it's a problem. We, we want to impress people because people put you on a pedestal. You can't, you can't repeat clothes. You can't do this. You can't, your social media has to have a certain number of following. There's so much unrealistic pressure that the industry has put us in. You can't go out without makeup. Or oh, when you're not wearing makeup, why well, you're not looking on fleek. I had to deal with the pressure of not being bound by makeup. At some point, I remember I wouldn't go out without makeup because I would think I wasn't good looking enough. Because someone once said to me, oh, you look different. Are you sick? So I had to learn to tell myself that, Olive, with or without makeup, you are a source. You, know? <laughs> you are saucy. You I understand? Like so there's so much physical, it's a vain industry. So you need mm. to learn how to validate yourself. If you right. wait for your followers, the world, the industry to validate you, be terribly disappointed. Mm. Then the, the pressures in the industry would be, um, would stem from remuneration. Let's not come here and act like there's a lot of money in yes. the industry. Yes. Starting out your career, you won't always have money. You might not always have money. The story is different for different people. Mm -hmm. But if you're going there because you think, well, I'm going there and I'm going to blow, I'm going to have all the money in the world, you might want to have a rethink. Mm. Because there are times when you have to make sacrifices. I did a lot of free jobs. Now, yes, I would stunt and tell you, we'll be arguing <laughs> money. Sorry. But mm. I did a lot of free jobs starting out. You know, the, the people, unfortunately, even when you've earned your reputation, there's certain people who will not see that. You would have mm -hmm. to be the one to reinforce it and tell them, no, you will set a standard, you would realize that you will lose some jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too, not all jobs are yours. And then people will say to you that, auntie, calm down. Someone said to me, your Instagram, you're talking to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus too much. Calm down. It's not you that love Jesus, pass. Wow. You know, like, oh wow, oh really? Um, but I, I, I'm not want apologize. you to downplay your Jesus because you know that's their own advice to, to help you, you know, forge, forge ahead. ahead. Like yeah. But the funny thing is, I even feel like my Instagram is a mishmash of many things. You go there, you see that okay, this girl is a Christian girl. You will see me dancing tomorrow because mm. I'm a happy child. Mm. So I don't. I didn't even think my Instagram was spiritual enough. And somebody was telling me that I should downplay it. I said, mm. I want people to go on my page and feel the positive energy that I bring. Which is interesting, because speaking, speaking of that, for example, now, there are some church folks that I'm sure, I'm sure, I feel like you might have gotten this before, some church folks that will now go there and see scripture, or maybe talking about Nancy dancing the other day, and then they start... How do you navigate that? How do you deal with that? I'm learning that the standard of determining what is right and what is wrong is not what another person else thinks, but mm -hmm. it is my conviction and my relationship with the Holy Spirit. So if I start second-guessing a decision, so I want to wear something, or I want to post something, mm -hmm. and I start second-guessing and thinking, mm, I know that, okay, the Holy Spirit is probably the one mm -hmm. pulling at me. Mm -hmm. But if I don't feel any type of way, because I know I've, my mind is not giving off, you know, my mind has not been given over to a depraved mindset. So mm -hmm. I feel that, I don't feel any type of way. This thing doesn't feel wrong. I don't, I don't look at it and think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't feel the Holy Spirit chastising me for dancing mm -hmm. and putting it on Instagram because I'm a happy child, mm -hmm. you know. And then I, I don't allow those things to get to me because there would always be someone that will... I'm learning that there would yep. always be someone that will not be pleased by your actions and your decisions. Your dress would always be inappropriate for somebody. Your makeup would always be inappropriate for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, just do you, but be at peace with God. Have, um, have a peaceful relationship. Don't seek your validation from what people think on social mm -hmm. media because you can't please everybody. I know ice cream. I like that. I like that explanation. I like that we're laying that to rest. Okay. So let's move a little further along in, in, um, in this Oliver Modi story. <coughs> so, um, yeah, Madam Olive, you oh, know, wow. might want to take a look at Why the camera. Why do I feel like I know where you're going to right yeah, now? Yeah. Can we wrap up? Can I walk away? <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> so, Olive, mm. you're single? Yeah, I'm single. Okay, single as a Pringle. Okay, mm. so, a few questions about being single. Okay, yeah. Let's talk to those Christian sisters out there, right? Mm. Perhaps Christian brothers as well. So, does being single 
in this industry, the fact that you are in the industry and you are single, the men from church that want to come and chase you, does it chase them away? Has that ever happened? Okay, I'm thinking. It hasn't chased out outrightly. I'd say that I, I was in a quote-unquote situation with someone and mm. we're talking and the person just outrightly told me that the fact that I'm in the industry you know, makes it uncomfortable for him. So if mm. we were to get married, that I'd have to... You'd have to stop. And probably do something that would make me work from home. I'm like, my work is not a work from home. Wow, wow. You know, but I, I don't think it's necessarily... Be and that was a Christian brother as well, but I don't think that was because he was a Christian brother. My first, re my first relationship, I actually gave up my first relationship because of my career. The first mm. person told me, you either practice law or you choose entertainment. And if you choose entertainment, it can't work out. And I cried and I chose entertainment in peace. And I'm happy that I did, wow. you know, make that choice. So yes and no. I don't think it's just a function of Christian brothers. I don't think so. I just feel that some people are not comfortable with the public life. Mm. And that's okay to mm. find out what works for you, what you can deal with. And... You know, stick to it. But okay. if you can't deal with it, that's okay for you too. Next question on single things. Hey, I'm afraid. <laughs> so we hear, we hear sometimes, and we do know of some, I like to think that I'm one, but we hear, okay, of eligible age that there are some churchless men in the industry. Is this true? That's Have you encountered churchless men in our entertainment? Yes, what is churchless? Churchless, you know, the guys <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> are claiming Jesus on their head too, mm. you know. Are they in the industry for one to perhaps date? Oh, yes. So there's an, uh, there's an assumption that if you're in the entertainment industry, then you can't hold God, which is an absolute lie. I have friends, mm. male, female, that carry God on their head like government work. Mm. And, you know, they're in the industry. So, yes, there are definitely people that are God-fearing, genuinely God-fearing in mm -hmm. the industry. Okay, okay, okay. So aside from that one uncle in the Lord that made you choose between this and that, you know, <laughs> Have there been any other instances where you've met somebody and because they see the amount of exposure, this is not just your, your career, but the amount of exposure that you actually get, you know, either on social media or you, you're always seeing you on TV from here, there, and it ended the relationship because it's like, I can't do this too much. Funny enough, not really, not that I know of. Maybe the people that we've had situationships and mm. it just lasts for a short while and then okay. you find out that at the end of the day it's not working out. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. that's part of the reason, but they won't Perhaps. tell me. Um, but I do know one day that I intimidated one guy once. Wow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't have to do this. Report but, yourself. But that one was just for fun. I wasn't feeling him and it was just on my neck. So I knew that this person wasn't going. I could tell. Mm. you know. So in the first few seconds of talking to him, I knew his kind of person and how he won't be able to handle it. So I just... You know, start talking about politics. At the time, I was in a political show, and I knew that. He said, well, I'm not interested in all those political stalls. He said, okay, can I see what you do? And I sent him a link on YouTube. I think after that, he wasn't so excited he anymore, because again. he just realized that they, we're speaking different kind of languages. No. So wow. yeah, at the time, I just, it was just for fun. And okay. Okay. I think I have more sense now. Just rather <laughs> have a conversation with you and tell you and that, tell you. you know, I can't do this. Okay, that's a better way to go, yeah. right? Okay, okay. So what are the major pressures of being a single girl in the intimate industry? So we can't even deny that we want to have sex. You know, One. it's very important because mm -hmm. our body, we all, everybody's acting as if they're not thinking about it. It's a lie. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But we're trying not to do it because we're trying to, why, why, we fear God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it's easy or it's, I know in our close circles, I know the kind of conversations we have. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to this next one because it's a very important one. Okay. Um, also, a pool of dating. So you meet people that are believers, but mm -hmm. they are telling you things that are alien to you in the Bible. So they are saying, oh, it's okay, God understands, we can do stuff like this. I don't understand. It's a different thing if you come to me and tell me, and we're talking about premarital sex, for example, mm -hmm. I was saying stuff like, oh, I'm, I'm struggling with it. Everybody's struggling with it. Mm -hmm. But don't come and try to make it right and tell mm -hmm. me it's okay. God totally understands. And even if I sleep and I do, maybe I have sex with someone, I'm never going to come and tell you that it's okay for mm -hmm. you to do this. You know? But you actually you will say that, you know, it was and actually my flesh, a My flesh happened. We're mm -hmm. all battling this flesh thing Not that together. it makes it okay. So I see people that say a lot of things, but we're all Christians, but mm -hmm. they're saying a lot of things and I'm wondering, is there another version of Bible I don't really understand? Maybe some, upgraded. Some few. You understand? Few books added. So yeah, the pool of actual... For a single girl, it's sometimes you're seeing a brother that has a lot of these things, but then the main things that shows mm -hmm. that he actually fears God, you're not seeing them. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of people that are commitment phobes. Um, so they're mm -hmm. just excited with the idea of 
hanging out and all and then but they don't want to they com the commitment and this is goes both ways male and female, female. you know okay. people that are afraid of marriage and all that and yeah sometimes just the fear of yeah the fear of marrying the wrong person because yeah. you know that you're a christian and everybody's going to be looking at you like if you make a mistake how you you are in trouble that you are hearing from holy spirit mm -hmm. you don't make a mistake mm -hmm. you know so yeah i think those will be some of the any pressures. any pressures from from family I don't know, I've handled that. You've handled that. Everybody's oh, yes. on, my, on. I thank God that my family, they, they are very understanding and sensible people. Mm -hmm. I remember once, every time I would do something nice for my mom, she would come here and pray for me. I said, ah, your husband. At the point, I sat my mom down. I said, mom, I appreciate that you're praying for my husband and my children, and it's so beautiful. But can you please pray for these things in your quiet time? You don't always have to pray for me to my hearing concerning my husband because it made me feel like ah, she's waiting for me to come home and say where is my mm -hmm. husband so after a while you know she calmed down but now i think i'm immune to it when she prays for my husband i say amen because i know that she's <laughs> play, praying from a, a positive um side so, so it's not to spite okay. me two last questions very quickly okay give me your top three things you're looking for in a guy so you say dick what i'm going to shop for you a man today i'm sure you shop for it olive today Shopping, shopping is it like sh shopping for gift or shopping no, in character? Nah, shopping the <laughs> I know, kind I just... of man for you. <laughs> so you're talking. I like three. a kind man. I can't kind. even okay. understand. Un kind, kind mm -hmm. in words, kind in actions, kind even when he's angry, mm -hmm. and kind with gifts. Mm -hmm. I like a very, I like a God fearing man. It's nice for us to be able to speak the same language, or mm -hmm. for you to even be able to teach me stuff. Okay. And an intelligent man, okay. witty. Witty. Witty is important. That's very to me. specific. Very yeah. witty. Okay. You see, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was amazing time. having you and speaking very frankly and honestly from the heart thank concerning you so these much. issues. I think a lot of people will be liberated and will learn so much from what you've said. Thank you. Thanks. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Heart of the Matter. It was amazing talking to Olive and Modi. I personally just love how honest and real she was about many, many issues regarding some of the pressures of being a Christian in the industry. But anyways, until next time, please follow us on our social media platforms on Instagram and Facebook at HOTM TV and on YouTube at HOTM channel. Until next time, God bless you. See you guys. <laughs>